Okay, this is a demo of a closed form for Jackie. <laughs> We're going to do it bottomless. So it could be uh, threaded through a rebar, so it can be like a garden totem sculpture. Smack my clay down. So the first demo I did for you, that was like step-by-step -step teaching. This is more like how you do it after you can just sort of flow from one step to the other. When you get better at centering, you can combine the two motions. And instead of having to do down and up, you kind of do both at the same time. It's the wheel, um, the splash pan hits the side. What do you mean you do both at the same time? I mean, instead of pushing down and lifting up, I'm yeah. pushing down. Um, instead of pushing down and pushing in separately, I'm pushing down as I push in. You can do that for small amounts of clay, but if it's a large amount, you're going to have to separate anyway. So I center just like I would normally. And I want a relatively small footprint because I want it to be narrow, wide, and narrow. So I'm already planning. You have to know already what you're, what you're going for. So then I open. Now here's, oh yeah, all the way down because we're doing it close. I forgot we're making this one bottomless. See, so yeah, I open all the way down. I open all the way down, but I basically want to start this like a bowl because I want continuous curve. I don't want wall and then curve. I want like a sphere, right? So when I start, I'm not going to open it like a cylinder. I'm going to open it like a bowl, meaning instead of flat on the bottom, it's like a wedge. So you did that with your thumbs yep. so far. To get I, I, and, and, um, yeah, if it were a cylinder, I would have gone in with the thumbs out. and then together. Here, I did in with the thumbs and lean. Mm -hmm. All right, so first pull, where's my sponge? It's in here somewhere. Now, the first pull is even a little different because halfway through, I'm going to change direction. I'm going to be pulling sort of out and then sort of in. Now I'm switching directions, sort of in. My thumb changes, the outside hand changes position too, because when you're, when you're moving the clay outward, your pulling hand on the inside pulling hand is a little bit over the outside pulling hand. When I'm pulling in, my outside pulling hand is slightly on top of the inside one, and that's what gives me the curve. So it's like first, first I'm like this, and then I'll line it up. Oh, really? Not the opposite? Is it? Let me try it again. Yeah, my inside hand is over. Yeah, inside hand's on top. And then, then they're about the same. Uh -huh. And now my inside hand is underneath. So yeah, your inside hand starts on top and ends up underneath. It switches halfway through. Notice I haven't closed the top in too much yet because I still need to be able to get my hands in there. That's a pretty shape for a base. I've just never seemed to get that shape, so now I see what I need to do. Tell me what you're doing. Just more pulls exactly the same. Going out and then back in. Now, if we wanted to, we can use this flexible rib and belly it out even more. I just use the rib to make the shape that I want. I bend the rib itself. And your hand, your hand. Just keeping it in place, or you put pressure, get pressure against that rib. You have to. 
Yeah, pressure, pressure, pressure from both out. sides. Yeah. Let me get my water out from the bottom. I have a long thing on the bowl. Ah, yes, the wonderful sponge on the stick. Oh, it seems so rough, actually. Once you wet it down, it should be okay. Close it in a little bit more. Do you want throwing lines in it, or should I make it smooth? Throwing lines. Okay, I like Throwing some throwing lines. See, I wouldn't know what to do with a wobble mess. <laughs> ignore it. Just ignore it. Because look, I'll show you something. First of all, I like to pre-clean a little. It makes it easy for me later. Because this form has no bottom, if I were to wire it off right now, oh. it would distort. So I have to wait. Anyway. Once I stop the wheel. Does it still look wobbly? Does it doesn't look wobbly at all, does it? And is that is that what all of them will be? They they will be closed more on top. You could close it in more. I just don't know how to do that. Same technique, just more. I'll, let me show you. I'll do a I'll do a bottle form for you next. If you want. Yeah. Is there another lump of clay somewhere else? Yeah. Okay, so a narrower. Um, oh, would you hand me a bat, please? Right. It doesn't it's matter, really. You can so you just have a little hole in the bottom. Yeah. And then. Okay, so. Bigger one this time, huh? I mean, a smaller opening. Yeah, I want to see how you do that. You must just. Well, watch. Okay. So do you want to see like a sphere with a smaller opening? Okay. That starts a little bit more like a teardrop shape because you need to have enough clay to cover in that aperture on the top. All the way to the bottom because it's a bottomless form. Same thing. I'm going to start exactly the same. Start exactly the same, but instead of closing it in more, I'm going to let it be a little bit more in tall teardroppy. Yeah. Because this section here is going to be the part that comes in. to widen it so I can get my hand in there first. Yeah. All right, now they're about even, my pulling hands, and then it switches again. So now my top hand is on top. Okay, so now, see how it's more of a teardrop shape? Now, did you just turn that a little bit out at the very Yeah, top? because... Did you get your hand in there? I need to get my hand in there because now I'm going to close it up. So at first, I, I need to get my water out from the inside and be careful not to get too much in there. I've got to make sure the bottom part is exactly how I want it because I won't be able to get in there anymore. And now, I'm going to collar the top part and in. And you didn't leave any extra. On the top. The extra is this part. This is the extra, because look. The neck. Oh, I yeah. see. The neck will turn into the top. I'm going to drizzle a little bit of water just on the outside, not the inside. Then I speed up a little bit, and I collar. Collar, and you start with your fists, and you make L's. And you have six points of contact. One, two, three, four, five, six. And instead of, relax. Stopping to fix. Good. Instead of having, instead of being flat like this, you angle a bit like this, because this part catches any wobble. Because if you're like this and it wobbles, it's all over the place. If you're like this and it wobbles, it can only go down. So yeah, all right. I start below where I need to be, and I start squeezing more and more and more as I go up. That narrows it in. 
follow that up with a little corrective pull, which just recenters it. on the surface because I can't really do anything on the inside now because I don't have any, any, pr any oh, pressure that there. so cool. <laughs> so I'll do my little pre-cleaning and remember this is bottomless so I can't yeah. wire it off. Wow. Wow. Oh, there you go. Mm. Show off the aperture. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Now, and there you go in closed forms. If, if you were to do the 